Guten Tag ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to take a look at how to fetch data from an API with React Native and we will also take a look at how to display the data inside the actual application. This will work for both iOS and Android. So as you can see I've already created a new project using the create React Native app command and I've also started my emulator as you can see right here, my Android emulator. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and create a new project and start up your emulator or your physical phone. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import the activity indicator. Like that. Let's just reload to see that that works all right. Yep, we got it included. So we're going to use the activity indicator just to show a loading uh, spinning circle here while the API is loading. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the beginning of the app class. I'm gonna create a constructor, pass in the props and we're gonna say super props and then we're gonna declare two states so this states state equals with is loading which is gonna be a bool to decide whether or not the API is loading right now. We're also gonna set a data source we can set it to uh, null right now because it's going to be empty until we have fetched the results from the API. So we will be storing the results from the API in the local state of this component. Okay. So that's it for the state. We got everything set there. That's all for the constructor. Now we're going to create the component did mount method. like that which will be invoked after the render method and then it will update the render method to output the data so what we're going to do now is we're going to use the react native fetch method so we're just going to say return fetch then we're just going to copy and paste this example api endpoint which i got right here it looks like this if you want to we can take a look at it right here uh, as you can see, it's just a normal JavaScript object with a title, description, and an array of a couple of uh, movie objects right here. And we're gonna fetch the movie objects, all right? And then we're gonna loop them inside the application. So by default, the fetch method uses uh, uh, the get method, which is what we're gonna use to get the actual movies here. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this API endpoint and we're going to say then. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the response from the API and we're going to convert it to a JSON object, just like that. All right. Next step, so we're going to take the JSON object, which is returned from here. So we're just going to say response json arrow function so what this does is first we're getting the data from the api we're passing in the data right here in the response and we're converting the response to a json object then we take this json object and we're gonna do something with it right here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna number one set is loading to false because this means we're not loading anymore since we have got the data. We're also going to set the data source to the response of the movies. So right here. So simply what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot set state. Pass in an object of the state. So it's loading. Now it's false because we got the data and the data source. Oops, data source is equal to response JSON dot movies, which is the array of movies that we looked at just a couple of seconds ago. All right, so now the reason I'm using the ES6 arrow function right here is to not lose context of this since we're using this set state, and this refers to the class we're in, so the app class. All right. 
So that's why I'm using the ESX arrow function. Good to know. So what we're going to do also is we're going to say, let's say catch error. So if we got any errors in the call, let's just say, oops. Let's just say console.log error. Yes, yeah, so we can see what's going on. Like that. Let's try to reload now, see what's going on. Got an error. Let's see. Uh, line 27. What's happening? Oops. I closed that one a little bit early. So remove what I just put there and reload again. Yeah, that's correct. So that's it. We're getting the data from the API with the fetch method. Now, this is, as I said, uh, now we're using the get method with fetch. You can pass in a second argument except from this, um, which is an object that looks like this. All right. Uh, I'm going to actually just show you an example how that would look. We're not going to use it in this tutorial, but just to show you, I got this uh, copy pasted right here. So this is just a, a fetch example, but here we're using the post method instead of get. Uh, and as you can see, we're using it as a second argument right here, right? So we're first passing in the API URL. This is just an example, but you get the idea. And the second argument is the method, which is set to post. Headers with accept and content type, and then we got the body, so here you can pass additional parameters if you want to send parameters to an api for example all right so this is how you do it the post way and this is how you do it the get way which we're going to be using now so let's just delete that that's just to give an example of different ways to use it so what we're going to do now is we're going to go down here to the render method I'm just going to add a little bit of space in here to make it easier to read. So what we're going to do now first is we're going to say if this.state.isloading. So if we're currently loading, we don't want to return the results from the API because there are no results yet, right? So what we're going to do then is we simply just going to say return uh, and let's return a view with a style, we can give it a style of styles.container and then let's pass in the activity indicator, right? Just a loading circle so we can see something's going on in the application and let's close off the view like that. We can also go ahead and delete, let's see, we can delete everything right here as the initial code was when you create a React Native project because we don't need it right now. So let's see, we can leave the container style exactly as it is right here. For now, so now if, if we're loading, let's return this as an activity indicator. Uh, if we're not loading, let's say else, Let's return the actual data, right? So let's just indent this a bit. So what we're going to do now, first of all, it's let's check that this work works. I'm just going to pass a simple text here. Content loaded. So now this should show up eventually. So let's see if it does. Yeah, so you can see here super quick you can see the activity indicator uh, followed by content loaded which is correct so everything's working correct logically or what the word is but it's working correct so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use uh, a map function the JavaScript map function to map everything in the data source um, so the state we're setting here with the movies response right so what we're gonna say here is let's just create a new let and let's call it movies 
and we're gonna say this dot state dot data source dot map and then we're gonna give it the value the value is the actual item so the movie then we get the key and in here let's just say return a new view we're gonna give it a key prop which we're gonna pass in the actual key from here right now this key is uh, mandatory uh, required by react native uh, react native uses the key property to keep track of uh, which elements has been updated or removed or changed all right so you will get a warning if you're not using it so i'm gonna use the key prop then also let's add a style for this here so let's say we can call it styles dot item and we'll create that in just a second like that and then also let's pass in a text component right here like that inside the text component we want simply let's say we want the title of the movie so let's see what we got we got the movies and then we get the title and release here so let's say value dot uh, title which would give us then the title of the movie which is what we want and finally close off the view so this will return a new view with a text with the content of the title of the movie for each index in the data source state all right so let's save that and down here let's uh, let's simply say movies so this will print out all movies but before we print out every movie let's add some basic styling to this item so we don't get a warning that the style doesn't exist so let's just go down here container and we can say uh, item let's set it flex one full height full width and as you can see now we're actually getting the movies here since i saved the application and it's auto updating or auto reloading when i'm saving uh, we're actually getting movies so that's good we can see everything working so flex one for full width full height uh, let's say align self stretch now i'm using this because you know the container is uh, set to align items center so center along the uh, x-axis and along the y-axis all right so this means that the items will be basically pushed together as small as they can be horizontally all right so i'm setting a line self to stretch will which will force each item to span the full width of the screen okay let's also set a margin just to add a little bit of spacing between the items and let's say uh, align item center and the justify content center yes to center text horizontally and vertically and let's also add a border bottom we can start with the width let's set it to one and then also border bottom color let's set it to light gray so let's say e e e like that and let's try and load reload the application and see what we got and we got an error trying to add a root view guys with the id already set so yeah we're gonna do a call add root view so let's see let's just oh all right i have no idea what that warning was about but it disappeared by itself I just updated my emulator, so I don't know quite what's going on here. Um, just to get rid of the, that warning, let's just move everything up here in a row that might have been the problem that it was complaining about. So you get everything here in a row, all right? So as you can see, now we're getting the movies and they are displaying in... Uh, this very simple list with a border bottom. 
So if you got any questions, you can just ask at the full stack discussion forum or simply write in the comments here. Um, so that's it. That's how you use the React Native fetch method to get data from an API.